What's up everybody? Welcome back to the MSR Workshop. So in my last video, we did an unboxing of this K40 Monport laser. Now Monport is a company that I am partnering with and I'm going to be doing a series of videos on these lasers here. So in today's video, we are going to be starting our journey of upgrades. And the first upgrade, and I think the most essential upgrade over all of the upgrades that we're going to be doing, is adding air assist to this machine. Let's get started on that. Jumping right in here, let's take a look at the supplies that you'll need to get this air assist up and running. Now, the first thing that we're going to take a look at is in this little brown box here, and that is going to be our replacement laser head. Now, you'll need the replacement laser head because it has the fitting on it to attach it to your air assist. And this comes from a company called Cloud Array, and this seems to be the most common one that people replace on their lasers. It only runs about $25, $26, and I'm not even sure why Monport and all the other K40s don't just come with one of these heads already attached, and then it makes it possible that people that want to add air assist would always just have to buy their own little air pump and tubing and connect it because at $25 I'm sure these are really cheap and inexpensive to make they look nice but at 25 bucks you got to think that the price markup on them is not I mean even if it's a 50% markup I mean it would be pretty cheap for a company to just include these to begin with and yeah just Monport any other companies make K40s out there listening just include them with a head that already accepts an air assist for people that want to make upgrades that don't have to want to go and buy a new head so the next part you're going to need is well I didn't say need you don't necessarily need this but I wasn't for sure and this is a replacement lens now I went ahead and bought an 18 millimeter uh, replacement lens to go in this new head and the company is called CNC OL Tech. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I've probably slaughtered it, but hey, that's okay. Now, I read some mixed reviews on whether the existing lens will work on the Cloud Array head. And I wasn't for sure. Some said yes, some said no. There may have been an old version. Well, the old version, I don't know if it did. So people were ordering replacement lenses. I went ahead and ordered the lens just in case and turns out that yes the existing lens does fit so you don't have to replace it but this is a bit nicer lens next is you're going to need some air assist tubing now this specific tubing is a hard rigid tubing and that keeps you from getting it pinched in the drag chain because we're going to feed it through the drag chain this is my actual air assist for the air pump this is one i pulled off my previous later and there are a million of these options on Amazon that you can choose from, but they're basically aquarium pumps. And here I've just got a little plug that I'm going to wire up just a standard plug so that I can plug it into something. And we'll talk more about this air pump here in just a second. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and loosen this little guy here. And this is for our little red dot pointer. And then I'll unscrew this here. And this just pulls straight out just to kind of get it out of the way because we'll be unscrewing the drag chain from the top of this laser module here and um, then we can lay it flat and it'll make it easier so we can thread the air assist tubing through this drag chain. So the next step is we are going to need to go ahead and loosen the laser head from this gantry here. So just grab hold of the bottom. It may be kind of tight. I was able to remove it. So what I'm doing here is there's a couple pieces. This is actually where the little lens sits. Don't necessarily have to do it, but since it was unscrewing for me, I just went ahead and unscrewed this piece. And just be careful when you pull this out. This is our little lens, and if you didn't order a replacement lens, you're not going to want to touch this. So when you replace your lens, and I'll talk about it again, you want to make sure the con 
concave, not the concave side, the convex. So that's the part that's bulging out is sticking up and the concave side is pointing down. Next, we're just going to grab hold of this. Oh, yep, it came loose. And just unscrew these two halves. Now, there is a mirror included on the top. The new replacement head does not include a mirror. So that mirror is something that we're going to add to our new laser head when we put it on here. And just take you looking over it. It is not very nicely machined. It's kind of got some little metal bits on it. Not real pretty looking, but this new one look like it it's meant to go on this machine. It's really, really nice. So in the box of parts that comes with your laser, you do have a double-ended wrench, and that is so you can remove this little bitty guy up here on top. Just gonna try to remove it without my hand being in the way. And now that I've got it loosened, we should be able to just pop that guy off. Try not to drop it here. There we go. And now we can lay the drag chain nice and flat, which really does make it pretty simple to feed the air assist tubing through this. All right, so next we need to install our new lens in our new laser head. Now, let's go ahead and unscrew the sections apart on this and just kind of take a look and see what we're working with here. So these little top screws here are made of plastic. So just be gentle with them when you screw them in and out just so you don't break them or cross strip them because they'll be pretty easy to do. And these will help hold our mirror down. Now the mirror is a little bit thinner than the recess that's set in here. So I ended up having to grab a little washer just to kind of put on. So it gives these little uh, white screws something to push against. You can also use that little metal piece that I just removed. Just be real careful not to touch the front of this. I kind of looked over this. It did have a couple little spots on it. So I went ahead and cleaned it. At this point, I cleaned this off camera and it just drops right in the little slot. And then we put our little plastic screws back in and I went ahead and screw these all the way in not knowing if they would be enough to hold the mirror in place without it rattling around well it wasn't so here in just a second I'll add a little plastic washer on the top now people have used that little metal piece right by that allen wrench that comes on the old one that can hold it down I didn't like the looks of it so it was more of an aesthetic thing than anything so I ran and grabbed a little plastic washer and a metal one can work too, but I had said, well, it'll just match with the white screws. And then I went ahead and screwed these back in, and that seemed to work perfect. And all this is really doing is just keeping the lens from rattling around. I say the lens, the mirror, from rattling around in the little slot that it's in. Now, because everything's pointed down, it's not necessarily going to rattle if you don't use it, but it does have the potential to move a little bit. So, being that this secures it down, you know your lens is always going to stay in one spot and keep your laser spot focus where it needs to go. Just a little bit of a reassurance. So now we're going to take out the two very small Allen screws on the lower portion of this new laser head. And just set those aside, don't drop those, and then the bottom half just kind of slides off. This top half is actually where your new lens will go. So that part screws off, and then this part screws off here. And it's right underneath here where either size of lens will fit. Now it comes with a little silver adapter ring this silver adapter ring is where you would put the existing lens that you're using and that would fit right inside that little round circle there so i'm going to put it on here just so you can see how it fits and i'm going to just drop that right in there and works like a charm
But since we are not going to use that, we are going to use the new one, which I would assume is much nicer. Then we'll go ahead and install this one. This is an 18 millimeter lens and it's not terribly expensive. It runs about $24, so it's actually the same price as the uh, laser head itself. So if you're cheap, just use the one that comes on it. But if you want something a little bit nicer, and you can see here I'm indicating that one side is curved up and the other side is curved down. So you want the curved, the concave side down, and you're going to remove that silver spacer ring so just leave that in there and then screw our little blue retainer cap back on now there isn't a plastic say neoprene washer that you can put in here to keep the metal part from pushing against that lens but the portion where that metal is pushing against the lens is not a part of the lens that gets used so not too big of a deal and just kind of screwing the whole thing back together we'll have to unscrew this when we actually put it back on the gantry but this is what the whole unit looks like with everything installed now I'm gonna go ahead and take the other Allen screw out and then that bottom barrel comes out and that is to adjust to get the air assist maybe a little bit closer to your workpiece to get it to work a little bit better but for the most part, it's just kind of cinched up against the laser carriage. So looking back here at the laser gantry, this is where we're going to install the new head. Now the method I'm doing here is actually incorrect. You actually want to put it on the upper half of the laser head instead of this lower half, what I'm showing here. And that's because this bottom half doesn't have threads. And so you're actually not able to secure it tight enough to prevent it from moving around when the laser is in use. Otherwise, this thing is gonna slowly move around on you and it's just not gonna work. So sort of ignore this part, but the process is similar, but you're gonna use the upper half because it's got the threads on it. You can actually tighten it down. So now that we've got our laser head installed correctly, you can see from the shot here where I actually put it installed, we need to heat up this tubing just a little bit because it's a really rigid tubing and it doesn't like to stretch. So it doesn't like to fit over this head very good at all. And so I took a little bit of a torch and just warmed it up just a little bit and that'll make it just slide right on there. You'll still have to push it on there a little bit, but it slid right on there. And I'm gonna get everything snugged up and make sure it's nice and tight. And next we're just gonna go ahead and put our little laser red dot back in the hole and kind of tighten that stuff down. Now, once you actually fire this laser up, you're going to have to do some adjusting, so don't get too hung up on the position of it just yet, but we're going to put it back in there, and then we're going to move around to the back side and actually get the pump hooked up. One last little check here to make sure everything slides, and I know people were like, oh no, don't slide it, but I'm being careful, everything is unplugged. So we're going to be good. We're just making sure that we don't have any resistance and that the drag chain and the belts and everything are going to slide smooth and freely. So before we jump around to the other side, let's take a look at the old laser head. It's really not impressed with the quality of this or the fit and finish. The rest of the machine is great. I love the fact that they're leading the industry where they are including a board that accepts light burn. But if they want to take it up one more step and really lead the industry with K40s, I think they need to include a head that accepts an air assist just right off the bat. Then they would really stand out and make them the first company that would do that. They're also the first company that works with light burn out of the box for a small K40 like this. But I think adding a air assist option or at least make it available so all somebody would have to do would be plug and play would really be nice. Now this next step is not necessary, but you notice on your machine you have a lot of available holes like this. So what I've done is I've taken little rubber grommets and fit them in all the holes all over the machine. Some to just cover them up, some where the cabling will fit through. So in this instance, this is where our air assist tubing will actually come out. Now this is one to make it look nice, but two, I think it also prevents say if you were to have an electrical cord come through here, that if you have any sharp little edges, this just prevents it from cutting into the cord. 
but also too because you have your tubing going through here this is where air can get in dust can get in I think if you have these little grommets in here it just prevents contamination from creeping into your machine I'll be sure and leave a link of where I got these if you do decide to do this but I think it just gives the machine an overall better look more finished look and it protects any of the tubing coming out of the machine just yeah just to make it overall look cleaner and more finished so here's a shot of the water inlet and outlet sides that I went ahead and did the same thing on and also this prevents because these tubes are a little bit more flexible this prevents the tubes from getting pinched on the sharp corners of this and here I just fit a dummy plug with no um, hole in it and this just prevents dust and debris from getting inside the machine then I went ahead and did the one right above the water outlet hole as well so in this part here we're going to do some quick holes on a couple pieces of wood and this is where we'll be using to mount our new air assist so I'm going to go ahead and get this secured to my pieces of wood and I had to do this because of that weird little air inlet tube at the bottom but this made it so I could actually attach it to the table a little bit easier. So I'm using Craig screws here with the little flat top washers and they work really well. And now we'll go and install it to the table. So the mounting location I've chosen here, I've got the little air inlet pointed up instead of down and that'll prevent dust from getting sucked into that. So it'll be hidden underneath a little bit. And if you plan on using this laser a lot and it's just your primary laser or doing a lot of like cutting, I would encourage people to look at upgrading your air assist to an actual air compressor. An air compressor will give you much more air volume and you'll be able to dial it in way better than this little guy here. This you're just left with either on or off. There's no dialing it in really at all. But an air compressor, you can actually control the volume of air that comes out and it's going to be a steady stream of air instead of just little puffs of air from one of these aquarium pumps but this is still a good option if you want to start here so let's take a quick look at what we got so far so we got our compressor mounted at the back of the table and our extra spool of tube in case we need to make it longer somehow and we're gonna go ahead and use the plugs on the back of the machine and I went ahead and marked the positives I would not recommend using these on most machines but this little guy is perfectly fine and it'll turn on when you turn your machine on all right guys moment of truth here and it works yay so our air assist is now officially hooked up that was easy so the next step in the next video is going to be aligning the lenses and getting our water pump hooked up and a couple other little things but we've got good airflow coming out of here so let's get everything buttoned back up well guys that's a wrap on this video i really enjoyed it it was very easy you saw how easy it was to add air assist highly recommend doing that on any laser that you have that does not include air assist by far the number one upgrade that you can do. It will change the way you laser and how good your lasering looks. I will be doing videos about every two weeks on this laser and we will be continuing our upgrades next week with alignment check on the mirrors because we just installed a new head. So we wanna make sure that head is aligned and properly working. We'll be upgrading our temperature gauge on this by installing an inline flow meter as well as a water temperature gauge. Not just one that's taped to the outside like you saw in my unboxing video, but it's actually gonna be measuring the water in the line. Then we are gonna be going ahead and hooking up the water pump itself because we need that in order to laser. And then we're gonna be adding a heater. Now the heater is gonna keep our water warm enough during these cold winter months to prevent stuff from cracking. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, as always, leave them below because I do respond and I really appreciate people's kind words. And as always, be sure and hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for my next video.